Hi everybody, Carol here with Asperger's vs. Neurotypicals. And um, today, um, for those of you that are new to my channel, I'm here, I'm here to share what has helped me on my own journey. So um, I'd like to share what I've found works for me. The reason that I want to make my life better and more peaceful and more fulfilling is because I want to fulfill my life purpose on Earth here as an Aspie, as an ADHD, as an introvert, as an HSP, highly sensitive person, and as an empath, and as a mother and a wife. <laughs> so I um, would like to give you a little bit of a background of myself. Um, I got my doctorate in chemical engineering and biomedical engineering and spent two decades in research in the corporate world and had a couple children. My son's an Aspie, my dad's an Aspie, and I'm full of the Aspie traits, especially the creativity, thinking out of the box, and being quite some kind of a visionary. And um, I think I descended from an Aspie, a famous one named Johnny Appleseed. As you may know, his name is John Chapman, and he was um, I descended from one of his siblings. So I thought that's kind of interesting, but um, saying this because he was a wonderfully quirky individual, and when I think about Johnny Appleseed and Einstein and Tesla and a lot of the other people that have Aspie traits, it makes me feel a little bit more self-conscious because I totally admire them. And so if I'm going to get made fun of for my quirky traits, um, I can at least say, well, these other people had these same traits and they're admired by many people. So <laughs> for whatever reason that I'm not admired, at least I'm like those people that I admire. <laughs> Anyway, um, I'm always trying to find little ways to feel better about myself, so I thought I'd share that with you. And sometimes I playfully wonder if my child is Johnny Appleseed's reincarnation, because my child goes barefoot everywhere and loves plants and animals of all types. And, uh, the topic of today's talk is sleep, and um, I'm going to list five things that will help you get better sleep. And then after I go over the list, I'll give some fun facts. And you can hang around for those if you like. But the first thing, uh, if we want to have a good productive day that's memorable and happy and um, where we're in control and we don't pig out on the wrong foods and we we don't say the wrong thing and you know we're on our toes in other words we're aware we're alert we don't miss anything and we get good ideas you need to get enough sleep and um, you need to get all cycles there's five cycles apparently of sleep where you go from slow wave delta to REM and then back again and we want to get all those cycles because they're all important now, we also, number two, we want to be regular with our sleep. Go to bed the same time every night and get up the same time every morning. The more you can do this, the better the quality of your life will be and the more things will go your way because you'll be on top of the world with your newfound, non-sleep deprived brain. In other words, you'll be getting the sleep that you need to restore your brain and body. So, um, for example, I put on my red glasses, and by red glasses I mean my blue blockers that block, oh I put them away, but they have sort of an orange amber tint and they block all the blue light. I put those on two hours before bed and that allows melatonin to be made. Then I wake up at 6 a.m. that allows full eight hours of sleep, but I wake up on my own and I only set my alarm at 7 as a backup, um, a backup like emergency if I have to be somewhere. But I always want to wake up on my own whenever I can. Um, maybe one night a week I won't be able to, but um, that's real important. And number three, I always want to get full spectrum light during the day, especially, and most poignantly here, is the high noon it has the most blue light. And so you want to go outside and get some blue light. And it needs to be full spectrum sun. You don't want to be getting your blue light from the fluorescence and the LEDs because it's not balanced and that blue light isn't balanced by healing red and infrared and you need all of those because you see the blue does damage and the red and the infrared repair it right there on the spot and if you don't 
have the red and the infrared there, your eyes will build up toxins that are hard to be able to be removed. And by toxins, I mean the normal metabolic waste products and the protein deposits might build up on your eye and um, basically it's like clogging up your arteries, but it's your eye. And did you know that your retina has, especially near their fine vision area in the very center, um, it has the least dense blood vessels of any part of your body. So there's, in other words, there's not very many blood vessels going to your eye. So you need every one of them to be working in order to get the proper nutrients in and out of your eye. Proper nutrients in and then toxins removed. So for this reason, we want full spectrum light, which allows a continual removal of the buildup of uh, cellular byproducts. And um, so full spectrum light during the day. That means going out for at least an hour. Some people say 30 minutes is okay into the sunlight in the day. And um, then at night, you want to get zero blue light. Um, we uh, One analogy could be that we evolved as a species with natural lighting. And we only had fire at night, which makes sense because the amber lights that we use for night lights, those do not interfere with sleep. It's only the blue light that interferes with sleep. Actually, the green does a lesser extent, but it's the higher energy blue waves that do it the most, and so we try to cut all of those out. And some of the more expensive, like $50 blue blocker glasses, um, they're fairly, they're very easy to see out of. But they are orange, but um, they block all the blue. So those are really efficient. And if you wear those two hours before bed, you can be sure that you're not going to hinder melatonin production. And then um, one more thing is um, the last thing, number five, is to get enough magnesium, B6, and DHA. These are involved in the biochemical reactions of tryptophan to serotonin and serotonin to melatonin. And so if you want to have enough melatonin, that's the magic chemical, that's the magic hormone that we all want at night to be able to sleep. Um, and then as a last bonus point, number six, I would say do not worry before bed. Try to be as calm as possible. Perhaps do meditation or yoga at night if you need to to calm down. And don't, um, like some people when they do correspondence, even when they're wearing their blue blockers, on email, they might get emotional, even if it's a good emotion. If you get any kind of emotion at all, then you'll be up all night worrying about it or thinking about it. So you try, you really want to quiet your mind down uh, before sleep. Now, some of the benefits of sleep, I'll go through them. It allows your melatonin to be made with that cycle of blue in the day. That kind of tells your body, this is the beginning, okay? The blue light is out. This is the beginning of our day, and then at night when it starts to get all red light and no blue, um, it's like, now we can make melatonin, so then melatonin is made. And here's what melatonin does. It tells the brain to do, um, it tells the brain and the body to do a lot of restorative things, not just one, but very, very many. And that's why high melatonin levels at night are correlated with less cancer because of this. And here's some of these things. It um, it prevents neurodegenerative diseases. It makes you calmer and you won't gain weight. <laughs> it um, helps the beta amyloid plaque, which is a byproduct and a toxin in your brain that builds up more so in some people than others. But it allows that to be removed because at night your brain swells up and the space between the neurons increases. This allows the cerebral spinal fluid to come up into the brain and carry away the beta amyloid leaving your brain cleaned. And so that would help pre prevent Alzheimer's, for example, because it's known that Alzheimer's patients have a lot of beta amyloid plaque in their brain, which is thought to be responsible for all the tangles and all the synaptic blockages. Also, melatonin helps tell the body cells to do the nighttime activities, such as DNA repair, to make antioxidants, to do angiogenesis, to make natural killer cells, which helps with immune function and uh, efficacy, to clear the beta amyloid, as I mentioned, the plaque, and to regulate metabolic hormones, such as leptin and ghrelin, so that you are less hungry during the day and have less cravings. 
Also, it helps you make better decisions the next day, uh, such as have more control over your willpower and prevent meltdowns, for example. Um, it helps lay down memory, and it also helps with longer telomere length, the melatonin does. Uh, longer telomeres, by the way, uh, equate to slower aging. There are things that shorten the telomeres make you age faster. <laughs> just said another way. I'm just going to say that um, I have a series of videos, and they all talk about uh, full spectrum lighting and the health effects and why you need full spectrum lighting and why uh, LEDs and fluorescents hurt your health. So I would um, ask you if you're interested in that sort of thing, you want to prevent macular degeneration, take a look at those videos because I took a lot of the experts viewpoints and I kind of summarized it all together in a way that made sense to me. So um, that's kind of like what I'm doing with this talk. I'm summarizing my research and now I can come back to this video and all my notes are outlined here for me so I guess it's selfish in a way but I also thought you might benefit. So I hope you do. So um, and now I'm going to list some fun facts. I'm going to change hands. In the 1990s, there was a new cell discovered, a new type of cell. It was a light receptor cell, different from the rod and cone cells in your eye, but this one was called a retinal ganglion cell. And instead of sending signals to the um, primary visual cortex, like the rod and cone cells do, this sent its signal to the master clock of the body in the suprachiasmatic nucleus of the brain. So. The retinal ganglion light receptor cells send the related nerve signal to the body's master clock, which sees the signal and says, oh, we have high blue light, so start the day, you know? And the day starts, and that's the beginning of the day. And then it tells all your cells to do daytime stuff. And then at night, when there's no blue light, the same body clock says, okay, all you cells out there, start doing your nighttime stuff and then that's when the melatonin is made and all that cascade of benefits I mentioned is done. So um, the thing that's astounding and really makes you really want to get sleep is that 15% that's a lot of human genes are turned on and off by exposure to the proper day and night light cycles and you want to have perfect darkness like 100% darkness at night and a lot of blue light during the high noon, you know, to keep that body clock going. And as long as it's dark at night, your melatonin will stay active and doing its job, okay? And all your cleanup activities and restoration will occur at night as, as it should with all your phases of sleep in the dark. Um, smartest and um, most efficient companies out there are utilizing this knowledge and this is kind of a growing trend. The smartest, most efficient companies out there are using this knowledge and they're giving employees ample light exposure for optimum work efficiency and optimum well-being. And many nowadays wear the blue blockers before bed so that they can function their best the next day. Because they'll allow their body and brain to rejuvenate. I'll end with a couple more fun facts. Um, there is a little sea creature called a flagella that swims up and down, up and down during the day and then he's still at night and this is controlled by melatonin. This was uh, in the single-celled ocean creature zillions and zillions of years ago. So this uh, function of melatonin to control our body functions for day and night has been going on ever since life began, at least as far as we know, you know, cellular, cellular life. So it's a very ancient and a pervasive life function. Now mice given light during the wrong time, in other words if you don't let the mice have any darkness at all, then they don't respond to chemotherapy. Like for example they have mice that are very prone to getting cancer and when they don't give the mice the proper darkness at night then they don't respond to chemo and the chemo doesn't make any difference. But if they give these mice darkness at night turns out that the same chemo does work and then they reduce cancer and then how this how does this translate to human studies um, humans were given melatonin at night and this uh, increased their cancer survival rate 
from 36% survival rate to 65% survival rate. So that's really phenomenal. And it, it's very convincing that you need melatonin at night to sleep. Turns out that blind people make more melatonin than not blind people, and they also get less cancer. So that's just, uh, I guess, supportive evidence of the theory that melatonin reduces cancer. And um, so in summary then, we want to go to bed at the same time every night, wake up at the same time without an alarm, and get plenty of sleep, at least eight hours for all your cycles, and try to wake up on your own, but have the alarm set in case you need it for emergencies. Um, we want blue light during the day from full spectrum sunlight, so go outside at daytime. Even if the sun's not out, if it's overcast, it's still going to be a lot brighter than indoors, and you'll get the full spectrum. And then at, uh, at night, you want to block the blue light. So if you have to check your email, it's better not to. It's better just to stay away from electronics for a couple hours before sleep and wear your blue, blue glasses or just use amber lighting. But if you must check your email, try to not get <laughs> anxiety or worry and uh, wear your amber glasses. And um, take your magnesium, your B6, your DHA, as well as following a healthy diet. No caffeine, by the way. We know that, right? And then, uh, or if you do take caffeine like I do, I have caffeine in my matcha tea and my chocolate. I don't have either one after about 2, 2 o'clock or 3 in the afternoon at the latest. And that allows it to metabolize out. And then finally, uh, I did say this, but I'll say it again. Be calm and peaceful at night and do yoga, deep breathing, meditation, or reading, whatever makes you calm and sleepy. Well, I hope this has been helpful to you, and um, that's all I have. I hope uh, it's useful, and if you would, please uh, be sure and like, subscribe, and comment if you have anything you would like to share, maybe something that helps you sleep, and I appreciate it so much. Thanks, everybody. Peace. Brainwaves rearrange. Rapid eye movement and chemical change. Floating to alpha from conscious beta. And then from delta to deepest theta. Time to retire and freely observe. The molecular dance inside my gray nerve. This dance takes me flying.